then through the air, it is senior quarterback Brad Banks, one of 24 seniors playing their final home game at Kinnick Stadium today. Iowa trying to keep their unbeaten record alive in the Big Ten as they hold out hopes for a conference championship as well as a BCS bowl bid. Well, let's go back to Matt Weiner. Pat, thank you very much, and that's a group of seniors that have put their stamp on the Iowa Hawkeye program. They've improved every year since Kirk Ferentz arrived. Matt Weiner, Mark May here in our college football studios, and while their minds are uh, supposedly in Iowa City and on Northwestern today, some of those kids will be thinking about West Lafayette and Ohio State. Well, not just some of those kids, basically most of those kids will be looking ahead, and it's just human nature. As a player, I used to do it. You always used to look at the scoreboard and see how your rival is doing or the teams that were ranked ahead of you and hoping that they would lose, actually. But here's another key. They're playing at Kinnick Stadium. They're playing at home. It's senior day. They don't have to look at the scoreboard because the PA announcer is going to announce the score of the Ohio State game regardless of what happens. Here's the other key. You run to the sidelines and tell your buddies, yeah, they just scored a touchdown against them. Yeah, they scored another touchdown. But you have to make sure one thing. Stay away from the head coach because Kirk Ferentz does not want to hear that. He does not want his team looking ahead. At all times, remain out of earshot of Absolutely. Kirk Ferentz. You can talk about it, but maybe jab your buddy and whisper. <laughs> you see it? They scored. They scored. Well, Iowa's got Northwestern to deal with today. The number one rushing defense in the country against the number 116th. Huffman was the kicker, and here comes Iowa with the ball on the 25. Fred Russell. Not getting much as he is dragged down by Lauren Howard. First year starter Brad Banks leads the country in passing efficiency. He does have 20 touchdown passes, just four interceptions. Freddie Russell back in the lineup sat out last week against Wisconsin after he jammed his right hand in the win over Michigan the week before. And Russell is just 75 yards away from 1,000 on the season. He got absolutely nothing on that first down carry. Take a look at his alignment right now. He is eight yards in the backfield. Why? Because he's so quick getting a hole. They want him to slow it down, give him a chance to read blocks. One of the deepest guys you will see, and they give it back to Russell, and this time he is dragged down for a five-yard loss. Colby Clark with the big play. The offensive line for the Hawkeyes, over 150 starts between them. I talked to four NFL scouts on the field before the game. This is the best offensive line in the country, along with the Georgia Bulldogs. And they have four seniors on that line. Northwestern defense has sacked opposing quarterbacks only six times this season. Colby Clark coming up with that big play on second down. You know, Pam, one of the things with the deep alignment, they're not in it now, but right with, with, with uh, Freddie Russell, is you got to hold your blocks longer stop penetration. That's his deep alignment. There. So now on third and 15, Banks all the time in the world looking and finding for a first down. Maurice Brown, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. It's a great catch by Maurice Brown. Even while he's on the ground, he's fighting to maintain control of the ball. Never loses sight of it. That's a sign of a great receiver. We see Brad Banks delivers a rifle shot a little bit behind him. Maurice Brown does a good job adjusting the football. Ball was laying on his leg. He said, I'm not quitting on the play. I will not quit on the play. I will make the play. A good play by him. He was right where the first down marker was, too, so very aware of exactly how far he needed to go. He needed 15. He got 15. So now first and 10 from the 15. Jermel Lewis, the other running back, finding lots of space on the right side of that line. Defensive coordinator Greg Colby for Northwestern still looking for the right combinations at linebacker. Senior Vincent Cartea making a second straight career start. And Raheem Covington is the only other senior starter for the Wildcats. He has three of Northwestern's seven interceptions. This defense has got to play, keep them in the game and start fast early in the game. They can't get behind early. They are last in the Big Ten in total defense and scoring defense, giving up 40 points per game. Lewis, quick. Into the end zone, touchdown Hawkeyes! You know, I made the statement that this could be one of the two best offensive lines in the country, and you'll see why right here as guys are pull, blowing people off the ball. Watch 72, finish blocks. See, guys are on their back. When you get grass stains on your back in the first drive, it can't be for a long day. It's so a that, great job of the offensive line coming off the ball. Just blowing them off. Nate Kading in 
to add the extra point. So Randy Walker gambled on the opening kickoff with the onside kick. Iowa got it in good field position, and they punch it in. Jamel Lewis takes it in for the walk-on to a starter on the outside. And Derek Pagel has four of Iowa's 15 interceptions. Bob Sanders, a playmaker. Yeah, if you get a big hit and you're on Iowa defense, it's called a Sanders. That's respect. <laughs> You've just been Sanders. And that is a completion to Roger Jordan, the junior from Texas. Uh, another seven-yard gain. So you like what Brasnay does. He brings a, a calmness in the present. Talking to Randy Walker during their walkthrough yesterday. He told me, Chris, his team just lights up when Brent Bazinet is in the huddle. You can see it right now, and he has a command of the offense and knows where to go with the football. There they had trips down here to the far side of the field. They worked the one-on-one -on -one coverage at the top side. Bazinet turned, looked, saw the slant route open, delivered the football on time, which is key. In this offense, you got to deliver the ball on time. And they were just about a half a yard short of the first down, and Northwestern only 37% on converting third downs this season third and less than one here and and uh, Randy Walker and his Northwestern team struggling with just the three wins this year but Bazinet is one of those quarterbacks that gives his entire team a lift when he comes in well, you almost have to eliminate the quarterback sneak there you can see Brett walking up there and he's got that little lip a little giddy up with him you see he's throwing audibles out there those could be like a third base coach fake signals you know let's see Jason Wright in the backfield, and as expected, Wright gets it, and he does not appear to have the first down, a late lunge. Very important spot. Colin Cole, one of those big guys up front, making the stop. Yeah, Colin Cole fills out the gold pants nicely. <laughs> I mean, he is a big, strong guy, and, he's, and you and I, Pam, won't sit there and study him on film. He is just, a, 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 just massive in there. He's tough to move out. Right there, he controls his gap responsibility, comes down and pursues the line of scrimmage. Then when you watch his Hawkeye defense play, what you'll see, there's you see Colin. Look, he looks like a smart guy with those glasses. He probably is very smart, but he's a football player. Psychology major too, Chris. Yeah. 307 pounds of psychology see, major. See, when, when, when you're that big and that physically talented, it, it, it's not fair that you can get somebody guy's head through the mental part of it. He, he works the mind too. Go for it. Oh, and you know what? It looks like they will, because Bazinet is staying on the field with this offense. Randy Walker told you yesterday, why not? Let's gamble, let's go for it. What do we have to lose? He said, Chris, we're three and seven. Well, I'm going to pull out all the stops, and that's why it'll be an exciting game to watch. Now you've got a bunch formation up at the top. Right here is a, called a bunch formation. You see that? Right there, they like to work picks and stuff like that. But I'm looking for getting that. Fourth and less than a yard in their own territory, and they're throwing it right. Caught in the backfield, he goes down. Fred Barr, the middle backer, snuffed it out. That was a great job by Fred Barr because they're in man-to-man -man coverage. And there's no play action to hold a linebacker. Running back just sneaks to the flat. Fred Barr does what they call a hug up on his coverage, runs right to his guy and makes a great open field tackle. This guy isn't easy, right? It's not easy to tackle in the open field. Fred Barr comes in, not the most vicious hit, but it's an effective because he kept his eye on the ball carrier, wrapped him up and brought him down. Then you'll have the pursuit coming to the football. So Walker 0 for 2 and gambles. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Pam, that's not what Northwestern wanted. All the coaches were up screaming for a timeout so loud in here, players couldn't hear him. All right, Rob, an unusual call, certainly throwing the ball backwards like that when you only need a little half-yard uh, gain. Banks rolling out. He's got his receiver, Brown, at the end zone. Another touchdown for the Hawkeyes. That is the 21st touchdown pass thrown this season by Brad Banks as he creeps up on your former teammate Chuck Long on the career season list at Iowa. What you had there was the bootleg, and it was like the lottery game, pick five. He had five guys wide open. He went for the for the, the jackpot. Found, found, found him in the end zone for the jackpot. Nice throw, nice catch. Reese Brown on the post. Iowa, two possessions and two touchdowns as Kading knocks home the extra point. Maurice Brown, 107 yards worth of catches last week against Wisconsin. He gets 40 yards on this one and another Hawkeye score. And we are with you from Iowa City. That's Herky, the uh, Hawkeye.
It gets carried in on a platform, and right now, Iowa has carried off two touchdowns on two possessions. Just joining us, you missed a 40-yard catch. Maurice Brown from Brad Banks. Kading's kickoff. Taken by Jeff Backus at the goal line. And Backus with a lot of room. Northwestern strong on kickoff returns this year. And there's an example. He's up near midfield. Let's check in with Matt Weiner. Matt. Up and Pittsburgh feeling pretty good about themselves after the big win over Virginia Tech. But Temple bringing them right back down to earth. Tenardo Sharps five-yard touchdown and hit down on their home field. 7-0. Boy, always the danger of a letdown after such a big win last week, and that was a 49-yard kickoff return by Jeff Backus, Northwestern second in the Big Ten in kickoff returns. Iowa is number one, so good field position. Just shy of the 50. Bazinet over the middle, low to Mark Fillmore, and he was able to gather it in. Good catch. That's a first down. We mentioned the kickoff return yards and a turnaround, obviously, for Northwestern from last year when they were one of the worst in the country. Yeah, and the big reason they got two of their top playmakers, Jeff Backus, the starter at wide receiver, and, of course, Jason Wright, the starting running back, put the ball in their hands as many times as they can, give them an opportunity to create field positions. Wright actually has a 100-yard return for a touchdown earlier this season, and there is Jason Wright finding a little bit of room on the right side of that line. Picked up about three, Derek Pagel and Fred Barr getting in on the tackle and Jason Wright a very interesting young man he's a pre-med major said he considered Cal and Stanford Ty Willingham wanted to make him a defensive player he said I never played defense in my life and we <laughs> well, chatted with him yesterday he said I'm gonna play over there so he came to Northwestern and has done quite well second in the league in the conference in all-purpose yards behind Larry Johnson Bazinet to Roger Jordan and they're finding those short passes with success, he is up close to the first down marker. Well, this is where I was ranked last in the country, I believe, in pass defense, or close to the bottom of the barrel in, in pass defense. That's because their run defense is so strong. But Northwestern realizes that the run is just going to be a diversion for them today. If they want to move the ball, they got to hit, they hit the short passes like they're doing because Iowa is a big zone team. And Bazinet's making the correct read. He's delivering the football where it needs to be thrown to the weakness of the zone. Very savvy. Remember, he's only a redshirt freshman, Brett Bazinet. Time again. Coverage is good, so it goes underneath and throws it away. Schweiger, John Schweiger was near there. Let's go to Matt Weiner. Pam, NC State and Maryland loser probably out of the ACC race. Phillip Rivers draws first blood, looking for Jericho Cotchery. He's got it from 32 yards. Rivers ties the school record for touchdown passes. NC State takes a 7-0 lead. Thank you, Matt. That should be a heck of a game in College Park this afternoon. Second and 10. Bazinet, 5 of 6 so far for 37 yards. And that one is completed to Kunle Patrick. Close to another first down for the Wildcats. He's caught that one in front of Antoine Allen. Yeah, uh, first of all, great job by the Northwestern offensive line holding out the big front four of Iowa. And you see Brent Bazinet, very patient. You saw the tail end of that right there. Threw a rope to Kunle Patrick on the sidelines. It was a great break by Allen, but Patrick was able to bring it in, concentrate, knew that he was going to get hit. And with that catch, he is now tied a Northwestern record, catching the ball in 33 straight games. Dwayne Bates did that from 95 to 98. Now Patrick's tied him. It was a first down. Bazinet going the other way against the grain to right. And Jason Wright. He is shoved out of bounds at the 13, picks up seven. Now, Jason Wright is deceptively fast and deceptively strong. Now, remember, he was a wide receiver coming in. That time, he set up the screen well. Fred Barr, coming from his middle linebacker position, had the angle on him, but Fred didn't close the gate in front of the ball. He closed the gate behind the ball. You're tackling with a half a man. You close the gate in front of the ball. You tackle with a full man, bringing all your power with you when you deliver the hit. You need a full man to get someone like Wright down. Second and three after that seven-yard gain. Noah Heron with the handoff, or gets the handoff, and he is inside the 10. Should be another first down for Northwestern. Well, Jason Wright's a complete football player. 
Now, the, not only is he a runner, but also what he does is he becomes a lead blocker. And watch what he does right here. This is out of a split back. Jason Rice would have come in and take on Fred Barr, the middle linebacker. Now, Noah misses the hole right there. There's a hole. He had six points. Follow, follow my block, Jason says. I'm a smart guy. I know when to kick him out. <laughs> Make the cut. That's a bad read by Noah Heron. He would have made the cut off the block. He would have scored. Terrific block by Wright. But at least it was a first down. First and goal. And heading home. Oh, that was a dangerous pass. Bazinet is fortunate that that was not picked off by Grant Steen. Yeah, he didn't see Grant Steen out there in, in a zone coverage. Grant was kind of hiding, playing a little bit of possum. Had a great break on the football. We'll see. There's Brent now. He's throwing the ball where he's supposed to on the outside, but he didn't see Grant Steen. Great Steen makes a great break uh, on the football. He catches it. He's going the other way because Bazinet wouldn't have caught him with that with that uh, gift leg he's got going on. <laughs> Steen has three interceptions. He got them all in the game earlier this year against Indiana. Almost had a fourth. Bazinet into the end zone. Clear nice shot. and free touchdown, Ashton Akins. Yeah, that, and what did Northwestern need? That right there. First of all, he picks up a great block by Jason Wright, by the time. He knew where he was going to football. He went to the inside number two receiver who was not carried up, up the, or wasn't bumped at the line of scrimmage, was not able, you see right here. See, nobody bumped him. He's running free. That's tough pressure right there on that guy. He can't get him. He's running free. Bazinet saw that nobody touched him off the line of scrimmage, didn't disrupt the timing of the route. Bam, through the strike. Aiken's second touchdown catch. David Wazalewski in for the extra point. Kicking has been an adventure for this Northwestern team. Wazalewski's missed seven straight field goals, missed an extra point last week, but he nailed that one. Great drive for Northwestern. They cut the lead in half. Sideline, sideline type runner. And when you're lined up in the backfield, eight yards, and you're getting a handoff about six and a half, that puts pressure on your offensive line to hold the blocks longer. What Northwestern is doing to counter that, they're doing a good job so far of getting off blocks and creating pressure, forcing Fred Russell to bounce more side to side as opposed to hitting it and getting it. Hitting and getting means running straight ahead. Right. Okay. Positive yardage. Yes. He's not gotten positive yardage <laughs> he, today. He's not hitting and getting. Nope. Third and 20. Russell is now out of the football game. they got to pass it. Nope. they got to run it. As Banks takes it himself and is caught from behind about seven yards short of the first down Doug Schimmel the junior linebacker makes the play you know I Brad Banks is one of those special players one of those special players that every time he starts running about 70,000 people stand up and go whoa, whoa. he's a woke guy without even with making a seven yard run that's a special player Banks a senior playing his final game here today as David Bradley comes in for the punt. His 43rd punt of the season. Finlay Patrick takes it, does not fair catch, much to Chris's delight. Yep. And he is tackled down around the 46. We'll call it a 35-yard punt and a two-yard return. Well, Iowa and Northwestern have been playing football for well over 100 years. In 97, Iowa up by seven in the fourth quarter. Bad snap. Northwestern gets a safety. Here comes the comeback. Brian Musso with his second touchdown of the day. Cats up 15 to 14. Chad Johnson had one of those days you want to forget. He missed his fourth field goal of the day, and Iowa loses by a point. I, well, I, the biggest thing out of that highlight, I've never seen a kicker wear a 50s number. He didn't help him. No, no, he it needed didn't. a littler number. Maybe he would have made one of those field goals. Iowa gets the ball back and another completion. That is Kunle Patrick in the Iowa territory. An 18-yard gain, and that passing offense really clicks with Bazinet. Well, and would it, Pam, again, the, the protection that Bazinet is getting is just outstanding because it's given him time to survey the field. And you don't want to give Brent Bazinet time to survey the field because he'll kill you. Right there, he's just waiting for him to clear the linebacker, and he delivers a strike. That's right, Fred Barr, no chance on Patrick. Good depth. Hand it off to Heron, and Noah only picks up a yard. Bazinet so far, 9 for 11, 80 yards, and a touchdown. And when we did them a few weeks ago at Penn State, Tony Staus was the quarterback, and they really are a different team. Staus more of a, a drop-back guy, really not very well suited for this offense. No, he's not. And, you're, and you were talking about Randy Walker maybe playing Darrell Jenkins here early. Well, not when you're guys like this. If your guys <laughs> is hot, you ride that horse. Jenkins got the strap on, the chin strap. He's ready to go. But Bazinet has been a torch. 
And that time he decides to run, picks up about four. And remember, he is running with that brace on yeah. his left leg. And you watch when he takes a snap. He kind of hops and puts the pressure on his on his right leg to get his feet set. Then he'll set his left foot down. Watch when he takes. See, there's a little hop right there. You see that little hop? Now he, I'll tell you what, this is the the, the guts of a, a man right there, being able to suck it up and run that and going to take a hit. Man, uh, King, two weeks with a broken leg is just outstanding. He took a tough pill, obviously. A big old tough pill. Third and six. Bazinet, a lot of contact, but no penalty flag. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Oh, Pam, you two guys are talking about that little hop in Bazinet's step. He, he also doesn't know how to slide. You know, the coaches are saying he's such an athletic kid that he's never had to do that to protect his legs. So last week he was kind of taking those two-step knee rolls and ankle rolls and stumbling into a slide to get away from those big old linebackers. He never uh, played soccer and did the, the sliding tackle in soccer or, or obviously not much of a base runner in baseball either. You got to to slide if you're a quarterback if you want to survive. How about going for fourth down again, Chris? I love it. Why not? Three and seven. Second time they've tried it today. They were unsuccessful earlier in this quarter. Bazinet, oh, almost. That was Kool-Aid. Patrick had it in his hands and one is unable to gather it in. That's a big series for Iowa. Certainly, Northwestern had some momentum going. That's a drop pass, and it goes back to the point that I made at the beginning of the game. When you have an opportunity to make plays, make a play. Right here, he delivers another strike to Kuhn Lane Patrick. Now, people say, well, that would have been a tough catch, Chris. No, no. The rule is, hands on ball, catch it. That's the receiver's rule. That's a good, well-thrown ball. He's got to break that in. And he had it initially, too. It looked like he might have taken his eye off of it as he saw the defender flash near him. Would have been a good catch for Patrick, but instead, the ball goes over to Iowa. You got a big split right here by Dallas Clark. They like to do that to get him out in a round. Instead, Russell gets it, and he picks up about four. Let's go to Matt Weiner. All right, Pam, we showed you Temple's touchdown. Give them a 7-0 lead at Heinz Field. The Pittsburgh Panthers pit right back in it. Rod Rutherford to Chris Wilson, 14 yards for the touchdown. Panthers have tied this thing up at seven apiece. Matthew, Pittsburgh wanted the pulling off those upsets last week when we, we had four of eight unbeatens taken down. Second and six for the Hawkeyes. We're up 14 to seven. Russell juking, jitterbugging, and heading towards the first down marker. Raheem Covington made the stop, but that looked like classic. Fred Russell. Yeah, Fred Russell, the, when we asked the coaches what his strength is, and you can see it just by watching the film and watching him play, it's his vision. Now, Dallas Clark got away with a hold right there. That one he did hold he got because the jersey was stretched. But Fred Russell's a guy that's a dangerous back, just a jitterbug, as Kirk Ferentz <laughs> described him. He did not play last week against Wisconsin. He jammed his right hand carrying the ball against Michigan the game before. But Freddie is a lefty, so he primarily carries the ball in his left hand the middle that's the fullback Edgar Cervantes and he picks up the first down seven yards for Cervantes it's only his 19th carry of the season we got NFL for tomorrow the Miami Dolphins taking on the Jets coverage begins with NFL primetime presented by Miller Lite at 730 Eastern you can also catch the game on ESPN Deportes ESPN ABC your exclusive home for primetime football that might very well be Ray Lucas's last shot to get it done can't get it done tomorrow. They might have to go a different direction. And it won't be Troy Aikman, by the way. It will not be. That's always the rumor hanging around, isn't it? Banks completes it to C.J. Jones, his cousin. And the cousin connection connects for about five. Braden Jones making the stop. C.J. and uh, Brad grew up in Florida together. You saw the story that they would chase rabbits in fields, and they said that made them fast and quick and agile, chasing rabbits. Yeah, well, you know what? Rocky chased chickens with Mickey the trainer in the Rocky movie. He chased chickens. Why not chase rabbits? Did you see Rocky? Yeah, I saw okay. it. I forgot okay. that scene. <laughs> well, I would think a rabbit would be tougher than a chicken. Yeah. Chickens are, are quick. Rabbits got that nice little burst. Yeah, they got the dart, the burst. Second and four now after that completion. Here's Russell and Freddie sidesteps his way to another Iowa first down. We sidestep our way to Matt Weiner. 
And the U.S. Naval Academy has lost 38 straight football games to the University of Notre Dame, but the middies are up right now. How about Aaron Poloco from 11 yards in the option? Midshipman up 7-2 in the first. Wow. We'll raise some eyebrows. Playing that one in uh, Baltimore this afternoon. Nice day. Uh, people making a short trip from Annapolis up the road, up I-97 to uh, the nice stadium in Baltimore. And that carry by Jamel Lewis on first down. He picks up very little yardage on that. Lewis is the guy who started last week in place of Russell. Yeah, that's what they call the stretch play. You see the Brad Banks, he'll hold the ball out. It's called a zone, kind of a zone read play. With, and that'll give Lewis the option to run anywhere between the tackles where we see an opening. But right now, they're having trouble sustain, sustaining their blocks when their most successful is they're hitting it right up in there, either out of the eye formation or quarterback draw even. Out of their 15 plays, Chris, 12 of them have been rushing plays. Not surprising, considering the Northwestern is dead last in rush defense in the Big Ten. That is a completion to Maurice Brown. Brown looks to be a little bit short of the first down stick, picked up about nine. That's a good read by Brad Banks, and that's something. Now, remember, he's a young quarter. This is his first year starting for Iowa. And one of the things he's still trying to pick up is route progression. Right here, Dallas Clark was covered in the flat, so he sees Maurice Brown on the curl and delivers a strike. Maurice Brown runs a nice route here. He's going to push the defender up the field, set it down, and come back to the football. Nice job, well executed. Brown leading this Iowa team in touchdown catches and also receptions. Third and one. Lewis gets the first down as he is knocked down at the 25. We check back in with Matt Weiner. Pam Texas figures to have an easy day with Baylor today at Austin, home. Texas. So far, that's the way it's gone. Chris Sims up top to Roy Williams. Looks like he's finally back from that hamstring injury. This will go for 74 yards and a touch. Horns up 7-0 on Baylor. Kevin Steele finishing out the season for the Baylor Bears. It's a weapon for Chris Sims to have, isn't it? I'll tell you. The natural. Roy Williams back there. It could be a long day for Baylor. Texas, a lot of people like Texas's chances of maybe sneaking in. Boy, there's nifty running by Russell. Picked up six yards on that. Russell, 5'8", 185 from Michigan. Yeah, and Freddie Russell, see, he's a 5'8 guy, so he hides behind those big, tall offensive linemen. And as a defender, you can't see him a lot of times. And he does have great vision. And I asked Kirk to compare him to a running back. He said, kind of a Barry Sanders. Then he said, wait, not so fast, because Barry was the best. <laughs> but he has that kind of running style. That's right. Barry Sanders was Barry Sanders. Fred Russell, though, he's not so bad. We are complete with one quarter. Iowa up by seven, 14 to seven, in their last home game of the season. Watch Monday Night Countdown, 730. in the upper 50s. Here, the 10th play of this drive, the first play of the second quarter for the Hawkeyes. And Max gives it to Russell, and Fred is bottled up a little bit short of the first down. And inside Kinnick Stadium, Pam Ward along with Chris Spielman. And Northwestern, if you're just joining us, took a shot. Opening kickoff, they tried the uh, onside kick, and they also went forward on fourth down. You know, I think they have to to have a chance to win this ball game. They got to take shots. They went forward on fourth down twice. They weren't successful, but don't look for them to change. If they want to stay in it, they got to gamble. They're three and seven, nothing to lose. Randy Walker pulling out all the stops so far, and Kunle Patrick on fourth down, the second fourth down, should have had a first down, but was unable to hold on to it. As Cervantes, the fullback, gets his second carry and a first down for the Hawkeyes. Here's Matt Weiner. All right, Pam, elsewhere in the Big Ten today. Illinois into Camp Randall, and they break the wrapper. John Butcher to Greg Lewis. Got him in the back of the end zone. Just got in 36 yards. The Illini up 10-3. Meanwhile, Ohio State and Purdue have swapped interceptions this game. Boilermakers have cashed in with a field goal, and they're up 3-0 in West Lafayette. Thank you, Matt. A lot of people thinking that Purdue trip is a dangerous one for that Ohio State team. And they're down in the first quarter. First down here from the 13. Russell using those feet to change direction. Can he turn the corner? Terrific tackle by Raheem Covington. Just got a nip of that ankle. Yeah, Raheem, the senior leader of this Northwestern defense, did just get an ankle. Got him by a shoelace. 
But you'll see Fred Russell right here and, and just being able to have confidence in his ability to make moves, just shake and bake, shimmy shakes. <laughs> there he goes, trying to get to the sidelines. But Raheem Covington coming up and getting down open field. They won first down there. That's one thing Northwestern hasn't done so far this game is on defense at least is win the first down. Now the 13th play of this drive, which has gone well over five minutes. Russell trying something up the middle that time and not much room. David Thompson, redshirt freshman from Rockledge, Florida, closing in on him. Yeah, that time David Thompson did a good job of disengaging, took care of his gap responsibility, disengaged blocks, falls back in, gets a hand on him to bring him down. And boy, this Northwestern defense much maligned in the Big Ten. They're last in total defense, last in scoring defense, and last in rushing defense. But yes, they are first in pass defense. Well, that's that's uh, deceiving because teams have been so successful running ball. In fact, I believe Purdue only threw the ball ten times. Exactly. Ten uh, times. A spread offense throwing the ball ten times. Joe Tiller was amazed at that stat when he looked at it. Didn't need to throw it. Now third and seven. Banks takes off on his own, looking for the end zone, and he walks in. Another Iowa touchdown. That is Banks' second rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, yes, you see right here, Brad, it's, it's quarterback draw all the way because he never takes his eyes downfield. They're looking for open holes. He is absolutely like having his second tail back in that offense. That's why this Iowa offense is much improved over last year because of his ability to make big plays both with his arm and his feet. First year starter, Kading, now three for three in extra points. So Iowa with a drive that ate up well over five minutes. Cap it off with Brad Banks playing his last game here at Kinnick, and he's got himself a touchdown. Against them. It's tough to win ball games when you're batting 500 on third down defense. And Jason Wright takes a knee. Let's take it down to Rob Stone. Pam, Iowa defense with a long break on that last drive. So the D-line coach, a lot of time to talk to his troops. And two main points he was really stressing to his Hawkeyes. Hey, number one, we got to finish plays. And number second, we have to pick up the tempo. So, Chris, how does the defense kind of maintain or pick up the tempo? Well, they have to start getting some pressure with their front four. These guys are responsible for over 30 sacks during the season. But Basnay has had too much time. Now you're getting your first look at Darrell Jenkins, the running quarterback for Northwestern. They need to pick up the tempo with him. He will run the football. That is where he is most dangerous, and he does it right off the bat and gets around a would-be tackler and picks up the first down. It's a 12-yard gain for Jenkins, who has only thrown one pass this year, did not complete it. Now, if you're Norm Parker, you see Darrell Jenkins come up, you automatically, everybody yells, run, run, run. And Darrell made a nice move on, I think, one of the best strong safeties, one of the most underrated strong safeties in the country, Bob Sanders. Made Bob Sanders throw a strike. Bob Sanders will hit you now. High school numbers quite impressive. Jenkins getting 12 yards on that carry, a new career long. His previous was 11. And he's going the other way. Gets a nice block by Wright. And then steps out of bounds. They're going to mark him out around the 36. We were talking to Randy Walker yesterday. I said, Coach, are you a big believer in a two-quarterback system? He said, you know, not really. But the, the offense is a system set up for the quarterback to run. He is like a second running back in the offense, in this case with two backs in the backfield, a third running back, which the defense has to account for. Bazinet's number is impressive, 9 for 13, but Jenkins obviously giving them a totally different dimension. Handing it off to Wright, and he is bottled up about a yard and a half short of the first down. Here's Matt Weiner. Pam Colorado in the driver's seat in the Big 12's North Division in Missouri today to take on the Tigers. Robert Hodge, play action, finds Derek McCoy. This two plays after a Colorado fumble they recovered. That's 47 yards, good for a 7-0 Colorado lead. Thank you, Brad. Rod, uh, Hodge, Robert Hodge doing a great job since taking over at quarterback for Colorado. And of course, they're handing the ball off more to Chris Brown. Jenkins. Taken down from behind by Scott Bolin, and he appears to be a little bit short of the first down. Important mark coming up. Yeah, Scott Bolin came on the safety blitz. Great quarterback draw all the way. And again, if you're Iowa, you're, you're, you're thinking, okay, quarterback draw, the guy hasn't thrown a pass yet since he's been in the ball game. He's run it three times out of four plays. 
Cole Lynn is a walk-on as he is a senior and never had a scholarship here. Paid his way all four years. And they are that short of the first down. So another fourth and short coming up. They've gone for it twice before and are 0 for 2. And Jenkins is staying out there. Again, I, I you know what, maybe, maybe I'm crazy, but I think you go for it again. Look, you got a great center and a guard rule. Austin King, you got your running quarterback in there. Let them try to push their two big guys out. Go mano y mano, duo against duo. Try to push them out and use your running quarterback to get the first down. Sneak it. You only need a half a yard. Ah. And that was a little decoy play there as the punt team hustles in with the play clock running down. Brian Huffman is the punter. First time we've seen him today. He's punted 56 times on the season. Ed Hinkle retreats. Huffman sends him all the way back to his nine. Flags coming down. Looked like an illegal block. Should push Iowa back a little bit. That was a 50-yard boomer with a 10-yard return. Yeah, great hang time, too, giving your guys a chance to cover. A lot of times those long kicks are line drives. They're returnable because your guys don't have a chance to cover. But if you get a long one like that with hang time, that gives your boys an opportunity to get down the field. Huffman had a 71-yarder earlier this season. He's fourth in the Big Ten, averaging 41 yards a punt. He also has been called on to do some place kicking because of Wazalewski's struggles, but not today. And, oh, a face mask along with the illegal block in the back. Dick Honey going over to explain. I don't know what he's explaining though. Kirk knows the rules. <laughs> Kirk Ferentz, a former assistant coach under Hayden Fry before he left to go to the NFL and help out with the offensive lines with the Cleveland Browns and then move with them to Baltimore. He really has a love for it. for Iowa City, fans of Iowa. You, know, you, you think about Kirk, and he, I'm not starting any rumors, but obviously every year after the NFL season, jobs open up, and here's a guy that's taken a program with proven NFL experience and offensive mind, certainly would be an attractive candidate there for somebody. There is no foul on Iowa. That penalty was incorrectly thrown. The only foul is on Northwestern. That's what it he was telling me. A personal foul, face mask, will walk 15 yards from the end of the run, first down. So that hurts Randy Walker's team. The face mask will give Iowa the football near the 35-yard line right there. Building here in Iowa City. Old, not just in, because it's old, but because Iowa City is no longer the capital of Iowa. It is now. Des Moines. Exactly. Des Moines, Iowa. Very pretty day here in Iowa City, the former state capital. Brad Banks has a running touchdown and a passing touchdown. Dallas Clark is tight end all by his lonesome. Dallas first down into. Northwestern territory, but if flag flies late, Randy Walker is not a happy guy. Yeah, what's well, coming back? We'll see you get a block in the back. The guy just a hustle play trying to clear the way for Dallas Clark is Eric Jensen. And Eric's trying to make a hustle play. Got to get that head in front if you're blocking downfield. Pushing the back on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. There's a bootleg again that's set up by their running game. Dallas Clark's a guy that's going to do some damage. Right there's Jensen. That's a good call. Got him in the back. You almost want to save it. You, you can see a, a secret to cheat or to get a block <laughs> is just Jeez. bump him in the belly bump him with your back. Throw your hands up like you're trying to avoid contact. Rarely do they call that penalty. Now, I, I don't advocate that, but just... You know, sometimes that happens. Not necessarily <laughs> cheating, but a way to get an edge. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. That time, there was no edge. The play comes back. And Banks, on first down, throws it up for Brown, who got behind the secondary. And Brown off to the end zone. No flags. Touchdown, Iowa. It's, it's too easy. 
I, I mean, what do you say? They, they run a bootleg right, they complete it. Bootleg left, they complete it. He throws the ball high, so Maurice Brown can run underneath it. And what I like is his awareness on the field. He makes a catch, makes a great cut, and shows great speed, finishing the play, getting in the end zone. That 65-yard play ties the season high for Maurice Brown as he beat Dominic Price. Canning's extra point is good. Price is a guy who missed the last two games because of a sprained ankle, and that time he could not keep up with Maurice Brown. Iowa extends its lead to now 28 to 7. Welcome back to Iowa City. It's 28-7 Iowa over Northwestern, leading us to our AFLAC trivia question. When was the last time Iowa finished a season? Finished a season ranked in the top 10. They come in this week ranked sixth in the country in both polls. We'll have the answer coming up a little bit later in this football game. Meanwhile, Iowa, which had its lead cut to 14-7 in the first quarter, has scored two touchdowns here in the second to get back to 28-7. Kading, that one is through the end zone. Touchback, here's Matt Warner. And LSU with a week off to ponder their road meltdown at Auburn. They're back on the road this week at Kentucky, and this isn't going all that well. How about Jared Lorenzen, the Pillsbury throw boy, winging it. 21st touchdown of the year. He only has three interceptions. Wildcats up 7-0. Jared Lorenzen had all the time in the world to throw that pass. Yeah, any, any quarterback. College football, you give them time. They're usually going to they're going to hit some of them now. Pillsbury Throw Boy, one of the best nicknames out there. Yeah, <laughs> for Big Jerry, and, and he embraces it. Yeah, he says I'm a big guy, and he says he likes it because other big kids come up to him and say thanks. Now I can play quarterback instead of O line. Flag down is right. Picks up about ten. That might be coming back. Yeah, it is coming back. Linesman throws the flag. Usually a hold on the offensive tackle. Trying to hold the contain. Jason Wright again showing some burst around the corner. Wright coming into this game. Holding on the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the flag. Repeat first down. It's going to be first and 20 now instead of as they get pushed back to the 11. And uh, Wright so thrilled. He's a California guy. Was ecstatic at walkthrough yesterday that it was nice and warm. He said yeah. he's been dreading this game all season. Because two years ago they played here, he said it was about six degrees with a wind chill, and he's never so cold in his life. And it is a delightful afternoon day here in November in Iowa City. First and 19. They take it back from the spot of the foul, not the line of scrimmage. Bazinet throwing it short and incomplete, looking for Jeff Backus. He was covered nicely by Kevin Worthy. Good job by Kevin Worthy of not interfering and getting the long arm in there, avoiding contact over the back and breaking up the play. Just a good, solid defensive team. And it starts with the front four. And their front seven, that was something Jason Wright mentioned yesterday. He said, man, their whole front seven yeah. is something. Because yeah. you just see the, the front four on tape and you get a little skidgy. You get mesmerized. I mean, really, they're that good. Penn State has a great front four. Ohio State, this is as good as anybody in the Big Ten. And that time, they get a lot of pressure on Bazinet, who somehow gets it away and completes the Kunle Patrick for a 12-yard gain. Well, let's go back to Matt Weiner. And Notre Dame on the comeback from their first loss of the season, taking on Navy today and down 7-2, but knocking on the door. Tom Lopienski goes high, up and over. Irish up 9-7. Matt, Notre Dame among those unbeatens before last week, trying to bounce back. Third down conversions, Iowa almost perfect. Northwestern 0 for, 0 for 3 yeah. today. Yeah, you know, they need this one in here, or it could get out of hand, because I guarantee you, Iowa will smell blood if they don't already when they get down the field again offensively. Bazinet, that's a break by Schweigert, and he found him for a first down. That was a nicely timed play between the two. Picking up eight yards, and Schweigert is a guy who has been at Northwestern, it seems, for many, many yeah. years. Good, solid receiver. Has the speed to get downfield, but very precise. That time was a nice route. He came back, went beyond the sticks, comes back. Bazinet delivers a strike on the outcut. John's first catch of the day. This is his 41st career game, 25th start for Northwestern. And that was a big first down, the first third down conversion on the day for the Wildcats. Heron 
gets around the corner, breaks a tackle, breaks another one, and lunges forward to the 37. That's a hard-fought six-yard gain. That's a nice run by Noah Heron. Again, not being brought down. And Iowa came with pressure that time. Grant Steen hit the gap on a run, which was a run blitz. And you see Noah Heron right here. Make Grant Steen miss. Right there, Grant's got a close gate in front of the ball. Fred Barr misses, but Bob Sanders comes in. Good shirt sure tackle by Bob Sanders. He doesn't miss many guys. Heron, 5'11", 230, another Michigan Raider. Second and three after a seven-yard game. Bazinet whips it for Patrick. Another first down for the Wildcats. You know, the, the patience of Bazinet is what I like. Right there, Kunle Patrick's running a, a little, what they call a skinny post or a little slant route. And Fred Barr is right in line in the throwing lane. But Bazinet not panicking. Waits for Patrick to clear Fred Barr. See, Fred Barr didn't get his head turned around. As soon as he cleared Fred Barr, the ball was thrown on time. That's And on time, I mean the timing routes. He understands when to deliver the ball. The receivers feel more comfortable with Bazinet in a quarterback because he knows they will get the ball to him on time. And that was an eight-yard game for the first down. Now the 18th passing play of the, seat of the game. And he throws it in the general direction of Schweiger, who is well covered. Bazinet making those decisions as a flag is down on the field. Well, you know, when things aren't going well, sometimes them flags seem to, to fall a little bit more against you. There's holding every play. It just determines when you call it. And keep your hands inside. You don't want to get your hands outside outside the frame. You want to keep your hands inside when you hold. An eligible downfield on the offense. Five yards, first and 15. That time must be one of the big pants guys getting down the field. We have ABC Sports at 3.30 Eastern Time. Regional football action. Oklahoma takes on Texas A&M. Others will see Virginia, Penn State. That will be good. Florida State, Georgia Tech. Oregon, Washington State, Fort Pacific, USC, Stanford for our friends on the West Coast. Check your local listings to see what game you will get. Jason Wright gets a first down as he is corralled by Sean Considine. 16 yards, though, for Jason. That's a great read again by Bazinet because what you have is you have a corner blitz on by Joe Von Johnson. You'll see him come in your picture right away. Jason Wright on a screen pass. Does a good job of clearing traffic. Schweiger blocking downfield, getting positive yards and picking up a first down. A well-needed first down for Northwestern. Wright coming in with 20 catches on the season, averaging just under 20 yards per catch. And that big play gives him a first down in Iowa territory. 18, Jason Wright takes it right up the gut, close to another first down. Here's Matt Weiner. Bank check in once again on Maryland and NC State. Wolfpack dominating this game, but then the Terps handed off to Steve Suter. A little reverse, and look at him go. Suter separating. That's a 64-yard touchdown run. NC State's lead cut in half. Meanwhile, Purdue up 3-0. Ohio State has just punted the ball away again. All right, Matt, both of our alma maters down. But, boy, Steve Suter is such a dangerous weapon for Maryland. He's got, I believe, four punt returns for touchdowns this year. First down, Kevin Lawrence, his first carry. And we heard the pop up here, Fred Barr getting in on it. Yeah, Fred Barr and Kevin Worthy both coming up from their linebacker position, closing the gate in front of the ball, <laughs> knocking them down behind the line of scrimmage. Good read by both guys. See right here, it's the same play they've been running. Fred Barr just shoots the gap from the backside. Kevin Worthy just fills it from the inside. That's a one-two shot. Well played, linebackers, way to fill. Warren Worthy filled that hole and dropped Lawrence for a two-yard loss. Back to the air. Bazinet in the crossing pattern to Patrick, who's been his favorite target today, and that's another Wildcat first down. Yeah, and with Bazinet at the controls, look, the running game is just a diversion. Once in a while, you'll, hit, you'll give to Jason Wright just to keep the defense honest to set up the short passing game. Kunle Patrick again on the slant. Ball delivered on time, gets in front of Bob Sanders. Bob Sanders got his feet stuck in sand a little bit. You got to make a break. Go ahead and make a break. Read the route. Patrick moving his way up the Northwestern career list. He has five catches today. Came in seventh in Northwestern history with 127 career reception. Blitz coming. Bazinet gets it off. A flag is down as Schweiger was hit by Antoine Allen. 
And uh, Northwestern's going to get away with one because Schweiger ran the wrong route. He ran right into Antoine Allen. Schweiger was supposed to run outside. He ran inside. He had a misread. But Basney threw it right when Schweiger and Allen met. They get away with that because of the misread by Schweiger. So that's a break for Northwestern because they had a mental error on offense. They still get the yards because of the interference. You see it right here. Now they're coming on the blitz, so he knows he's going to throw hot. Schweiger's supposed to run out there. He runs inside. And he runs right into the corner. The corner's just holding his ground. That, that ball was not even close to being catchable because his head wasn't even turned for it. That's how I knew it was a misread on Schweiger's part. He's got to read the hot. Antoine Allen, just a redshirt freshman. He's starting back there as a corner all season for this Iowa team. After that penalty, it's now first and goal from just inside the 10. Herrick picks up maybe a yard. Let's go back to Matt Weiner. And Chris Sims and the Longhorns picking apart Baylor, as you might expect. Sims 5-5, five five, 98 goal. yards, two touchdown passes. This is the second of the two to B.J. Johnson. Horns up 14-0 at home. And Matt, Texas is fourth in the BCS standings, and this game obviously against Baylor won't help them much as far as strength of schedule is concerned. Now, the guy that's not a threat down here as far as running the football is right there, your quarterback, Basney, because of that cast on his leg, so the quarterback draw is eliminated, or the quarterback counter eliminated. Something that Jenkins could give them down here, but they're going with... Bazinet, that ball is tipped away, looking for Schweigert, but Bob Sanders made the play. Yeah, that ball was thrown behind Schweigert. Again, he knew where he wanted to go. He's running to the end line and running the end route. Sanders does a good job of stretching out right here. You see they're going to run. Now, nobody's jamming the number two receivers, but Sanders has good speed turn and does a good job of closing on the receiver, getting in front of him. That ball was thrown out in front where it should have been six points. Sanders all first team all Big Ten last year. 13th play of this drive coming up now. Third and goal from the nine. Three receivers in for Bazinet. Going in the corner of the end zone and he throws it over Kunle Patrick. Patrick covered nicely. Allen and Bolin double teaming him. That's what they call a smash corner route. They'll set a guy down in the flat, try to get the corner to jump up on the flat route and work Kunle Patrick one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And they did a good job of defending, forcing a high throw. David Wazalewski is coming in to attempt a 26-yard field goal. He has missed seven straight field goals. He did have a 51-yarder opening day in the thin air in Colorado Springs. And this one right in the middle of the field, and the drought has ended. Wazalewski had missed seven straight, Northwestern eight straight overall as far as field goals are concerned. The lead's 28 to 10 Iowa. Welcome back to Iowa City. Uh, Randy Walker's team has cut the lead to 28 to 10, thanks to a field goal by David Wazalewski, a 26-yarder, as Northwestern tries to claw its way back into this game, playing the sixth-ranked team in the country, a team, Iowa, whose one loss came earlier in the season to Iowa State. River kick that is picked up at the 15 by C.J. Jones, and Jones is wrestled down at the 25-yard line. Back to our AFLAC trivia question, which was, now that we know that Iowa is sixth in the country, when was the last time Iowa finished the season ranked in the top 10? And the last time they finished that high was number 10 by both the writers and the broadcasters in 1991. Their highest final rank, by the way, they were number two in 1958 and 1960. Well, Hayden Fry, who was the predecessor to Kirk Ferentz, really putting this Iowa football team on the map, took them to eight bowl games. Ferentz did when he was his old line coach under Fry. Russell breaking free into the Northwestern secondary. First down, dragged down at the 40. Here's Matt Weiner. Pam Anthony Davis has not played for Wisconsin after being stabbed last week. So Dwayne Smith in for the Badgers and into the end zone from seven yards out. He has 94 in the day in the early going and Wisconsin on the board, 17-13. Right, 
Matt, Illinois is a team that Northwestern will finish up its season against in two weeks. They're off next week and then close it up against the Illini. A lot of those in-state rivalry games. Russell again, showing the speed. Boy, he burst through there, down into Northwestern territory, 18 more for Fred. Now, let me tell you what they're doing now. They're going to set up their bootleg because it's the same formation they run their bootleg. Brad Banks is coming up and looking for the eighth man in the box, which is usually a safety. He'll, he'll describe where the eighth man in the box is, which is right here. Then he'll, he'll call the audible away from the eighth man in the box. He had the option to run one way or another. They'll always run it away from the safety. He's just coming up, identifying where the safety is and making a call up that. Mark Roush is the safety up there that time. Here he comes again. He's going to look at him again. 55 yards and counting for Russell with that. So Banks appears to be changing things up at the line. Russell, huge hole right up the gut of that Northwestern defense. Another Iowa first down and another visit for Matt Weiner. And Boston College still without a Big East win. And they'll do well to get one at West Virginia, but down 17-0. Brandon Brokaw changes that in from three yards out. It's now 17-7 Mountains. Matt, Fred Russell, a well-deserved hand as he comes off the field. Well, no, let me see you show this gallery right there. You'll see him at the end. He's the left tackle. Out of all the offensive linemen, many people think he's the most talented. And he's only a junior. That's scary. That's saying something. When you're the most talented out of that group. And Lewis. Jamel Lewis in for Russell. Picks up about three. And that offensive line for Iowa. Four seniors, that one junior in gallery, and Russell taking a break. And boy, the, the talent and the way that this team has developed. They were all on this team when they were 1-10 in, in Ferris's first season back in 99. And, and, you know what? And when you're 1-10, that's less of a reason to worry about a letdown if you're head coach, because these guys have been at the bottom of the barrel before. They don't want to go back. That's right. They use that as motivation. Lewis in motion. The running back now split wide to the right as a receiver. Banks going underneath to his tight end, Dallas Clark. And Raheem Covington is able to bring him down at the 20, but six yards for Clark. So Ference coming back to Iowa. He was an assistant under Hayden Fry, helping them to those eight bowl games when he was an assistant. And it has been a steady climb for them. Yeah, you can look at that, and that's a coach believing in his system, saying, guys, hang in there. We'll get better. Follow me. I will lead you. And he certainly has over the past four years because he has a system and he never wavered from it even when it wasn't successful. And they are very successful obviously this year just the one loss. Banks taking it himself towards the end zone. Two rushing touchdowns for the senior. Yeah. And it's just uh, the better athletes. There's nothing you can do. I mean, the kids from Northwestern are trying. They're trying to get off blocks, but they're physically, and I'm, I'm getting dominated at the line of scrimmage. Then you, when an athlete like Banks takes off, you got nobody that can run with him. It's tough to stop. And they're just getting manhandled. And, and what do you do? You buckle up and keep fighting. Banks has thrown for two touchdowns and now has run in for two more. He's making a strong case to get his name on the Heisman list. He's getting up there. A lot of people like him. Here's Kading. Fifth extra point try this afternoon. And he's a solid kicker for these Iowa Hawkeyes. The lead is up to 35 to 10. As Brad Banks saying goodbye to playing in Iowa City in grand style. They're showing it today. Jason Wright. Feels a lot of Hawkeyes on his back. Cross among those right on top of him. And the thing about their run defense, and, and what I like, and if you're a fan of defensive football, I think all people should enjoy, is they, they, you talk about it a lot, about getting 11 guys to the ball. Well, they get a lot of people on the hit. Then they get guys flying over the pile. So you know everybody's running the football, and they take great pride in that. And they have done a terrific job, not just today, but all season long. And this time, they get a sack. Matt Roth with his eighth sack of the season. That leads Iowa. Uh, he, he's their fifth defensive lineman that they bring in, that they alternate with. And Matt Roth, not the over overpowering guy, but he played linebacker last year. And they said, well, Matt, you're more of a pass rusher. There he gets his hands inside. He comes with a swim move and finishes 
the play. Of course, Brett is a little bit limited in his mobility, but Math would have got any quarterback with that type of move. A nice finish. Well, he was moved from linebacker to defensive end because as a linebacker, he was just a pass rushing kind of guy. And boy, eight sacks for him. Two of his teammates have seven. Bazinet on the run and throws it too far in front of his intended receiver. Now let's go down to Rob Stone. Pam had a chance to speak with both head coaches. We'll begin with Randy Walker. Hey, his Wildcats have been in this position before. He was very calm, very relaxed. This is just another learning step for his young program. Very happy with the offense, defense. Obviously, he's had some problems. They're just going to simplify things in the locker room and just play straight sets. On the flip side, Rick Ferentz asked him, hey, Brad Banks, how much longer are we going to see this talent? He said he's definitely going to start the second half, but after that, it's anybody's game. Thank you, Rob. As Brian Huffman comes in, just his second punt of the day. That's a skyscraper to Ed Hinkle, who takes it to his 43 and then breaks away. Hinkle, one guy to beat, and he does it. Hinkle takes it all the way for a Hawkeye touchdown. Well, you mentioned <laughs> at the start of the half, I said, man, they're strong offensively and defensively. Let's not forget about special teams. After all, football is three parts. They dominated on offense, defense, and now special teams just taking over Hinkle, setting up his blocks, finding a way to get it in the end zone, showing great speed, and again, the ability to finish. A career-long 58-yard punt return, first touchdown scored by the freshman from Erie. Kading, six for six on extra points. So Ed Hinkle collecting this punt from Brian Huffman, and then he's just off to the races. Iowa's offense doesn't have the ball yet in the first half, and they still get a score. Iowa came into this game number one in the Big Ten in punt returns, averaging 10 and a half yards per punt return. They got 58 from Ed Hinkle as he scored a touchdown, and that has extended Iowa's lead to 42 to 10, and every time Nate Kading hits the kick, it goes further and further away. He's all charged up. A junior from Coralville, Iowa, which is uh, just north of Iowa City, which is where we are for today's Big Ten game. Number six, Iowa unbeaten in the Big Ten, taking on Northwestern. Pam Ward, Chris Spielman, and Rob Stone along with you. And the uh, running game has been a bone of contention for Northwestern. They give up over 300 yards a game on the ground, 146 so far today. Yeah, and their offense hasn't taken the field yet in the second half, so that number will certainly be added to. Bazinet being chased from behind, and the guy playing with a broken fibula is going to get an extra 15. Kevin Worthy hit him out of bounds. Yeah, and, and that's, you know, Kevin Worthy got to be able to pull up, and if I'm a Northwestern, see, this is where I get nervous because if I'm an offensive lineman, I'm over there in 53's face. You better protect the guy that has the guts of your football team, run him with a cast on his leg, and somebody takes a shot at him. Somebody better get over there and make sure that doesn't happen again. I did not see one Northwestern offensive lineman address that. Which is unusual because two of their leaders are seniors, Jeff Rail and Austin King, the right guard and center respectively. Yeah, I, and that's the disappointing thing Here's right the there. Wild late hit out of bounds on the defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Uh, I'm not saying take a penalty, but I'm saying get over there and address Mr. Worthy. Look, this is your guy. Look, he's playing on a cast in one leg. He takes a shot now, and that happens in football, but you got to stick up for your guy. Bazinet by himself competes, completes it to Schweiger. And that's maybe a two-yard game for the senior. Bazinet so tough. Again, playing, he uh, broke his fibula running for a two-point conversion against Minnesota back in yeah. October. You know, I'm such, you know, I know I get excited here, but I, I'm Northwestern. I call timeout, and I call those old linemen over there. You protect your guy. I'm sorry. I'm getting excited here, but that can't help you. <laughs> you would have protected yeah. him. Somebody's got to protect him. Jason Wright picks up a couple more. It'll be about third and six coming up. And that's Claus. That's about his eighth or ninth tackle of the game from a defensive tackle position. And he is really, really a solid football player. What he does there is defeats his blocker, is able to come up and make a solid tackle on a running back as he has an offensive lineman hanging on him. Outstanding job. Claus will be back next year. He is only a junior. 
And that is incomplete, going for Mark Fillmore. Good coverage by Bob Sanders. And that Bazinet injury again happening against Minnesota on this two-point conversion attempt back on October 12th. And he told me yesterday, at first he thought it was maybe a tendon that was, that he had ruptured. And then he said, once he started, I said, did it, did it hurt? And he said, oh yeah, it yeah. definitely hurt. But uh, he knew something was wrong, but was surprised to find out it was a broken fibula. Everybody was surprised. Brian Huffman, his third punt today, backtracking. Hinkle, remember, he returned it for a touchdown last time he touched the ball. And this time he gets another nifty return. Hinkle gets it up to the 28-yard line. He had a 58-yarder for a touchdown last time. It's all Iowa. ESPN 2's presentation of college football brought to you by Coca-Cola. Got a little rose to that corn cob head. Yeah, those, those, that seems to be a popular item now, corn cob head. I'm looking for the, the, the butter. Eat that head. It's good. <laughs> a little salt, a little butter. They're hoping for a Rose Bowl here uh, for, uh, for this Iowa football team. And that is certainly up in the air. Fred Russell was faked to as Banks got it up in the air to Maurice Brown. You know, one thing that Iowa likes to do with Brad Banks, since it is his first year of playing quarterback, to cut down on his reads, a lot of plays are rollouts or semi-rolls. That way, he only has to read half the field as opposed to being a straight drop back passer where he has to read the whole field. So they give him two options usually on a route, and he delivers the football on time and with some zip. And he delivered at that time to C.J. Jones, the, the senior cousin from Florida, picked up nine. Russell gets away from two Northwestern tacklers and bowls his way forward for a first down. Vincent Gartaya and Tim McGarrigal were around him. But Russell again, not a big guy, but he makes people miss. No, he's got a, he's, he's got a great balance. What about this score? Iowa fans rooting like heck for Purdue to win. And it is 3-3 now as they've just begun the second half in Lafayette. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of uneasy feelings in Columbus by going into that game, knowing Joe Tiller having two weeks to prepare for a team. He's a, he's a successful coach. He knows what he's doing. And Iowa, or Ohio State has had trouble with spread offenses this year. Anybody that's going to spread get a little bit of trouble. Well, Northwestern played them pretty tough. Banks in the air for Brown, and a flag comes down. Mark Roush among those defending. Now, th now this is youth coming up right here. Now, Mark Roush does, have, does not have an idea where the football is being thrown, so he's going to go ahead and get to the receiver. Now, if you get to the receiver, you read his eyes. If his eyes are big and his hands are going up, you go up for the football. You got to look and lean. You got to play the ball as a free safety. On the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Let's quickly, let's go to Matt Weiner. Hi, Pam LSU off to a slow start at Kentucky. They were down 7 0, remember. Tied at 7 just before halftime. Marcus Randall to Devery Henderson. Beautiful grab in the end zone. And so they're up 14 7 at the half. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh still trailing in the third, 19 14 now. If you're Bob Tech, you don't want to see the Pittsburgh get beat there by Temple that's, or Miami. That's right. That strength of schedule stuff uh, comes into play. The opponents who beat you, you want them to keep on winning. Banks gets around the corner, is dragged down by McGarrigal, a true freshman from Chicago who has five tackles today. Kirk Ferentz says, okay, Brad, I know we're up here 42 to 10. Be careful. He's going to be careful of the place he calls. He, I, I don't call an option there. I don't want that guy getting hurt. I want to get Russell's got to be closing in on a thousand yards for the season too now. They want to get him his thousand here. Only about a yard or so short yeah, of that will yeah. keep you abreast of that as he tries to break that thousand yard barrier. Second and one, play fake. Banks up top, completes it to Eric Jensen, the backup tight end from Wisconsin. Appleton, Wisconsin. He's, he's like a starter. They go a lot of two tight end sets, both with two backs and one back. But again, showing good job of going up and catching the ball with his hands. Not the best thrown ball by Brad Banks, but one certainly 
a good tight end will bring in. And Mr. Jensen says, Chris, I'm a good tight end. I'll bring it in. And he has doubled his reception total this year. As Eric only had one catch for 25 yards coming in. Big guy, 6'3", 260. Banks now 9 for 9, Chris, through the air with a couple of touchdown passes. Make it 10 for 10. Dallas Clark, his other tight end, drags folks into the end zone. Touchdown, Hawkeyes. play a great route Brad Banks had him in his vision the whole time he's waiting for him to get open delivers the football on a shake and bake see Dallas Clark will come down and see Brad Banks Dallas Clark pushes off runs the route to the inside then again a great move and gets into the end zone Clark's fourth touchdown catch of the season Kading getting a workout with that right leg knocks it home for Trev Alberts, back in the studio, he loves Dallas Clark. I think he's going to be talking about this play later on tonight. You got to keep the hooks off. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. Automatic first down. He's got his right arm. He hooked him a little bit, turned him around. Had the right idea. Just a little late on your break. So the receiver with uh, most touchdown catches in a career, not Chris Carter. Not Terry Glenn. Joey Galloway. No. Hold on, I'll get it. All right, we'll, we'll wait for the big guy. <laughs> Russell did come back in after the curtain call and picks up a whole lot more. Finally, scooched out of bounds at the 22-yard line, but that's 21 more yards for Freddie. Here's balance and vision, and again, like trying to stop tanks with spears. There's a good block by the fullback just to kick out. Fred Russell, balance. See that hand go on the ground? That's a drill that you work on. Worried about him holding up during the bulk of the Big Ten season, being so slight of stature. And he's he now, a strong guy. Not just 1,000 yards on the season, Chris, but 100 yards for this game, his seventh 100-yard game. And we're giving him breaks. Amir Lewis now is in there. Chandler on the roll. Good catch as Jones got his hands on it. Gathered it in. Tiptoes down the sideline for the touchdown. <laughs> CJ with his ninth touchdown catch of the season. 11th of his career, and the route is on. Well, when, you, when you're when you effective running the ball, you can throw bootlegs all day. C.J. Jones does a good job of bringing the ball in with his hands, and this is what I like. A lot of receivers, you'll see, will be tight rope in the sidelines, avoid the hit, step out, but no, I need six. He goes and gets six. And that is Nathan Chandler's first career touchdown pass here at the University of Iowa. Nate Caden. Extra points coming easy to him as Chandler gets his first career touchdown pass for the Juco transfer, finding C.J. Jones, and Iowa has a huge lead. Nathan Chandler sitting next to C.J. Jones. The connection on the latest Iowa touchdown as they have extended their lead over Northwestern now to 56 to 10. Chandler's a big kid for a 6'7", 250. Yeah, he is a big guy. I don't know if he's as nimble as Brad Banks. That would be tough to do. It looks like he's efficient running this offense. He was certainly efficient on that drive, coming in and capping it off with the touchdown pass to C.J. Jones. Iowa passers today, by the way, 11 for 11, 219 yards and four touchdowns between Chandler and Banks. Just a dominating performance. I think Katie, he wants to get one through the uprights on the kickoff. <laughs> That's his next goal. He's, He's got, got a nice little win behind him to get there. Six touchbacks make it seven. He's going for a seventh today. Oh, he drilled it. Oh, he yanked it. Wide left. Almost. Maybe next time. Let's take you back to Matt Weiner. All right. 
Let's take it back to North Carolina State and Maryland. 14-7 game. Wolfpack inside the five. Josh Brown pick a lane to the end zone. He chooses one. And it's now 21-14. Maryland back in the end zone. Meanwhile, Ohio State and Purdue still tied at three apiece. Ohio State with the ball. The whole state of Iowa cheering on that Purdue yeah. team. Not the whole state. I know there's some Cyclones fans out there, but Hawkeye fans certainly want that to happen. Jenkins corralled quickly. Darrell Jenkins, the ball carrier. As Klaus was among those in on the tackle. Also Chad Greenway as some of the defensive replacements and uh, backups are getting into the game. And you notice so uh, Parker, the defensive coordinator, is going to stick with his big guys in the middle because they are the heart and soul of that defense. Holes and Klaus. Claus. As in Santa Claus. Yes. Delivering for this team, and as you mentioned, Chris, he's only a junior. Jared will be back next year. Jenkins going down quickly. Abdul Hodge, Matt Roth surrounding him. Another thing, too, when you get a new quarterback, he's going to go on the same cadence a lot of times. He doesn't want to get confused. Matt Roth, being an experienced player, understands that, had a great get off on a snap count. So it's third and seven as Northwestern tries to keep this drive alive. Still plenty of time left to go in this football game. Only in the third quarter. Jenkins, time, tipped, and intercepted. Jonathan Babineau with the pick. Yeah, Abdul Hodge does a great job of getting his hands up. First career interception for Jonathan Babineau, and you're right, Hodge. The redshirt freshman who just came in tipped it up. Well, you see Jenkins right here. He's staring his receiver down the whole way. Hodge just moving with his eyes, gets the hands up. Babino chasing the play, not giving up, hustling. Gets an interception that defensive end. Jenkins is looking right at the receiver the whole way. Here goes Babino. Running down. Make the play. Hands up, guys. Short passes, hands up. Good hustle to the football. You'll make good things happen. Babineau made something good happen by running to the ball. He's only a sophomore as Aaron Mickens, the backup fullback, gets his first carry. And Babineau is one of the guys that Norm Parker told us is going to be a great player someday. And this is a great thing going on right now because the whole offensive line is coming off the field together. You take a look at that, that's awesome. They're holding their hands, they've been through the struggles. They were on a one and 10 football team, 0 and 8 in the Big Ten. They were, they were belittled, they're saying they're the problem. Here they are coming off the field, their final day in Kinnick Stadium triumphantly. Awesome. As a team, as a unit, that's great. Well, that's a great gesture, isn't it, by Kirk Ferentz. Remember, he used to be an offensive line coach in the NFL and knows how important those guys are as Jamel Lewis picks up six out a yard short of the first down and this offensive unit and you mentioned earlier and it bears repeating NFL scouts love these guys yeah as a unit Pam I've talked to uh, numerous scouts and, and I, on the field before the game four different scouts all of them brought the point to me watch this offensive line Chris I said okay then during the week I was doing some prep work and they say, Chris, this is the best offensive line along with Georgia in the country as a unit. And four of them are seniors. Third and two for this backup offensive line. Chandler pitching it. Lewis is shoved out of bounds at the five, but he picks up another first down. We pick up Matt Weiner. Pam Pittsburgh in a bona fide scrap with Temple today. They recover a fumble, take it deep into Temple territory, and then Rod Rutherford finishes it off with a one-yard plunge. Two-point conversion good, 22-19 there. Ohio State still moving the ball on Purdue at 3-0. Thank you, Matt. Take a look at number 56 here. That's Eric Steinbach, the guard, senior guard, going to play in the East-West Shrine game, and he is definitely projected to be a relatively high yeah. pick. One of the best in the bunch. Lewis on first and goal, picks up a couple. 
You know, if you're Northwestern and you're on defense, obviously you're frustrated. You've been, you've been kind of getting it handed to you the whole day. The only thing you can do, I've been in games like this, the only thing you can do is keep swinging, keep fighting, keep competing, and let Iowa know that no matter what the score is, we will not quit. We will fight you till the end, and that's what you have to do. That's football. And I don't expect Iowa to call off the dogs either. You're here, you're playing in the Big Ten, you're playing the game, stop us. We're not gonna, we're letting our kids play. That's right, a lot of kids who don't get playing time, especially in Big Ten action, getting an opportunity now. They all want to score. Jamel Lewis, Lewis the ball carrier. gets it down to around the one, will be third and goal. I don't know how many bombs you throw if you're Iowa or, or it's tricky plays, but you know, you run your offense and let these kids get a chance to enjoy the excitement of playing here in Kinnick Stadium. And Lewis has gotten quite a bit of playing time. He did start last week in that win over Wisconsin because of the injury to Russell. As you see the Northwestern guys, the Northwestern Wildcat. Coming up, trying to come up with the answers. He's trying to make some friends with the Iowa fans. There's no reason for them to be hostile towards him today. I think Herky just took him down. Third and goal, Chandler fumbles it and Northwestern gets it back. Well, a prime example of what I was talking about, Pam. These guys aren't going to give up. They're not going to quit. You know, when you cross the line, you, you play for real. You just line up and play. You try to win your individual battle. What they're going to do is going to fake the pitch. He's got to secure the football. You don't see it secure the football. That's Jones knocking it out. He does a good job. They run any option down on the goal line, which I never like, because bad things like this can happen. Jones gets his hand in there, knocks it out, then hustles to cover the football. That's, he, he hit the trifecta. He didn't tackle, cause fumble, recover fumble. That's a trifecta. Great play for the redshirt freshman from Harrisburg, Illinois, his second fumble recovery of the season. That's the good news. The bad news is they gave him the ball inside the one-yard line. Darrell Jenkins, quarterback. Jason Wright struggles close to the five. Here's Matt Weiner. And the developing story, Navy and Notre Dame. Middies keep moving the ball, more than 200 yards rushing, and they get 10 of it here from Eric Roberts into the end zone. Two-pointer is no good, but get this, Navy has just recovered a Notre Dame fumble. They are deep in Irish territory again. That deserves a wow, and again, I hate going for two points when it's in the third quarter. Get the point. Just get on the scoreboard. I, I, hey, broken ball. Notre Dame having a little trouble handling the broken ball. Right. That's a broken ball. That was almost a broken right as yeah. Chad Greenway piled him up. And yeah, it's, it's a tough thing to defend, obviously. I mean, you know, Notre Dame coming off that loss. Yeah, you don't see it now. Notre Dame handled handled Air Force and their broken well. ball. Beat them up physically, but Navy playing them tough. That's a, that, you know, that says a lot about Notre Dame. How are you going to respond after a tough loss? First time that they have lost, obviously, this season, and under Tyrone Willingham. Third and six for the Wildcats. Jenkins down in the end zone. No, they're going to say that he was tackled just outside, so no safety. Yeah, that's a, uh, you know, that, that, that might be a mercy call. That might be a mercy call because he was not in control of the defender. The defender hit him, drove him back. We'll take a look at it now. This is called a dash play. Abdul Hodge does a good job of coming film. Look, he, he's not in, he's still up on his feet. He's in the end zone. You know, and still you see the Iowa guys running to the football. Ryan Huffman to kick for Iowa takes a timeout. Brian Huffman. Not much room as he's going to be backed up to the very back of the end zone as he comes in for his fifth punt. Well, he took a timeout there for 12 guys on the field. Did Iowa. We got football coming up. 3.30 Eastern time on ESPN. Virginia Tech takes on Syracuse. 7 Eastern on ESPN2. Ole Miss takes on Georgia. Team there trying to respond from the loss. 7.45 Eastern College Football Saturday presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Michigan and Minnesota for more on upcoming games. Log on to ESPN.com. Keyword schedule. Speaking of schedule, here's a look at what the dogs have. They hope to be in that SEC championship game. And Georgia Tech always a tough one. And you, know, you look at the Ole Miss now. They're playing at Auburn. That's always a good game. Of course, the rival, Georgia Tech. Always a good football game. Georgia sixth, by the way, right now in the 
ever important BCS. Yeah, you know, I'm not a fan of that rotating quarterback system that uh, Mark Rick does have down there in Georgia. Didn't didn't work last week, that's no. for sure. What's beaten teams? Records of opponents. And you know, one thing about the BCS, the team that you, you it does not count toward the BCS until you play that team, so their record doesn't become a factor until you play that team. And Notre Dame's strength of schedule is not strong at all. Clinton Solomon collects it at his own 46. And he is tackled down around the 33-yard line. 45-yard punt under duress for Huffman on a 13-yard return for Solomon, a true freshman from Fort Worth, Texas. Third quarter winding down, just eight seconds left to go. Nathan Chandler fumbled last time he had the football, but no harm, no foul, as Northwestern was not only unable to score, but gave the ball back to the Hawkeyes in very good field position. It's a good chance to get some of your young guys the, the opportunity to play here, let them run their plays. Lewis, nice move. Inside, outside, another first down for the Hawkeyes. He is tackled down at the 16. The third quarter now in the books, and Iowa City 56 to 10 Iowa. The offensive line getting a very well-deserved final curtain call at Kinnick. Well on its way towards its first eight-game winning streak since the 84-85 seasons, a streak that spanned those two years. As Kirky goes up into the stands. And Janelle Lewis goes nowhere, taken down. And Matt Weiner has more than that Ohio State game, Matt. Yes, I do. You heard the cheer. Purdue up on Ohio State 6-3. Meanwhile, Boston College and West Virginia and Mountaineers starting to put it on the Eagles. Phil Braxton with the reverse. Avon Coburn well over 100 yards in that one. It's 24-7 Mountaineers. And as we told you, another field goal for the Boilermakers. Kicking has been a problem, but they've got two of them today, and that's enough right now. 6-3. Yeah, Rich Rodriguez, what a job he's done at West Virginia and the Buckeyes, hey? Purdue, everybody knew that'd be a close game. We called it. Just a field goal separating them as Lewis reverses field and finds some space. Down to the 16. Let's go down to Rob Stone. Well, Pam, we're joined by a very well-known Iowa alumnus here in Iowa City, former tight end Marv Cook, an All-American in 88. And, uh, couple Pro Bowls to your careers where tell me a little bit about this team you're, you're in the area you were at practice Thursday you're very well informed with this team how, how much do they impress you well you know I, I was around when Kirk Ferentz was here the first time and then uh, when he followed Maine and I was in New England so I followed him out there and I mean it's a great football team he's done a great job of putting this team together and uh, I'm just glad I'm sitting in the stands and not lining up next to these guys right now hang with us one second after this play Nathan Chandler third and ten Blitz, retreats, finds Aaron Mickens, the fullback. And Mickens down close. He has a first down, Rob Stone. Well, you, you see your home team putting up the big points and Ohio State stumbling. Even though you're not playing anymore, that still has to be a special buzz as Iowa closes in on potential Rose Bowl. As a guy that grew up here in the shadows of Kinnick Stadium in West Branch, Iowa, and, and to be able to play here and, and to watch Iowa come back and have great success has just been a great treat. I will ask Chris the 87 game in Columbus. I don't know if he remembers that or not, but he, he remembers yeah. it. He was telling me as I was walking up getting you. This, uh, this team's had a lot of games like that. Uh, Purdue this year, fourth down at Dallas Park. This is a great, great football team, and I just hope you know great things from the rest of that next three, four weeks. Now. Marcus Schnoor, redshirt freshman from DeWitt, Iowa. Well, again, you bring in the, the second-team offensive line, and they're, and they're getting their fun. And, and the enjoyment that an offensive lineman gets is when you're able to run the football. They get the feeling of dominance. There are five guys working as a one, like fingers in the glove. Marcus Schnoor, freshman from Iowa, coming in, getting his action. His first career touchdown. And look who's kicking the extra point. It is not the regular kicker, Nate Caden. Nathan Chandler's number, it's blocked. And 
Northwestern, Raheem Covington can't pick it up on the fly. Lauren Howard, a defensive end by trade, picked it up. So they bring in another guy to kick it. It doesn't quite work, but they're still up by 52. That is a scene of the Iowa River. Some ducks just floating around on a beautiful November afternoon. And that last extra point, by the way, was kicked by Ryan Molinaro, same number as Nathan Chandler. He's listed as a running back. Actually, he didn't kick it. It was blocked. That was his attempt. Now the real kicker, Nate Kading, is back in. Mr. Touchback. So he can get it through the goalpost this time. I hope it fades over, but it is yet another touchback. It's his eighth touchback today, Chris. It's outstanding. <laughs> It's been a while since Iowa scored at least 60 points, and it was against hmm, Indiana, 62-0 back in 97. They did go over the 50-point mark in their season opener, beating Akron 57-21. to 97 was uh, back in the old uh, Hayden Fry era. Hayden Fry doing wonderful things with this football team. With the win today, Iowa will go to 10 wins for only the fourth time in its history. Jenkins in, intercepted by Scott Bolin, his second of the day. Again, there's youth and inexperience coming back. He's on the hash mark. He's trying to throw across his body back across the field. You now, from your experienced defender, you know that ball's going to have less zip on it because of the angle that the quarterback has to throw the ball. Jenkins took a little shot here. He's, again, he stares down his receivers. Bolin's just playing center field, breaks on the football. Second pick of the day. Does a nice job of breaking down the ball. And again, the zip is off the ball when you have to throw across your body and you throw back to the middle of the field, which you don't want to do on a sprint out because you know that pass defense in pursuit is going to be running to that area. Marcus Schnorr gets it as flags fly. And Scott Bolin, really a terrific story for this football team. Walk on who lived with different friends and cousins, never really had a place to stay. He said it's not like I was a homeless guy. Yeah. He just kind of moved around and lived on the kindness of strangers. And he was a limited player on special teams even last year, as we get the call, face mask. On the defense, holding on the offense. No offset. offset, replay the down. He almost quit the football team last year, did Bolin. Yeah. And stuck with it and got a lot of playing time this year. Yeah, people, you know, I think that's smart. I mean, he's, look, look at all the cash he's saving. He's, but not, he doesn't have to pay rent. He's living with his buddies. <laughs> and, and a generous offer because Kirk Ferentz, uh, there was a group of players that were thinking about giving the scholarship to this summer. Yeah. And he told Bolin that they were going to do the old, you know, number in the hat thing to make it equal. And Bolin said, no, don't put me in. There are guys more deserving than me. We only have one semester left. He said, give it to somebody younger yeah. as Mickens gets stopped. And it's a testament to, to the walk-on tradition here at Iowa. And I talked to Kirk about that yesterday, and he said, Chris, it's a great tradition. We get a lot of kids from Iowa that are tweeners, but they come here. And why they come here is they know that they're going to get a fair shot to play. And it's evident. Look, you, look at Dallas Clark was a walk-on linebacker in high school. He's coming and making great things happen. Bob Sanders, for example, the only other school that recruited Bob Sanders was Ohio U. Bob's from Erie. He's had a terrific career. Bo Lynn, by the way, a senior from Dubuque, Iowa. Mickens stopped for a loss. See, I like to see that by Northwestern now. They're not, they're not hanging their heads. They know they got a, a ways to go, but they're going to battle. You got to battle. There's no other choice. There's no other alternative. And that's what he's looking for when he turns on the film. If he does turn on the film, a lot of times games like this, that film goes right from the projector into the trash. But if he does turn it on, he's going to hold his guys accountable to their effort. And with that loss, it's now third and 20. Northwestern has next week off and then finishes the season at home against Illinois. No gain. Lauren Howard making two plays in a row for the Wildcats. Let's go back to Rob Stone. Now things getting worse for the Wildcats. You see them checking out Darrell Jenkins, and the head trainer just told me it is now a broken left hand. So they're going to ice it, and he is obviously done for the day. Yeah, 
next. So now they have two quarterbacks, Chris, one with a broken left hand and one with that broken bone in his uh, in his leg and Bazinet. Yeah. And they were thinking about red shirt. Yep. Darrell Jenkins. Now they, they wanted to get him in the, the ball game. Now obviously lost his red shirt, get him experience. Now they lose that because of the broken hand. So you'll see Stouse next. For so he's next in line. On fourth and 20, Iowa chewing up a little bit of clock. Just gives it to Schnorr and Northwestern will take over on downs. And uh, so the quarterback is hurt. We'll see another one when Northwestern comes back. They're down 62-10. To be a Hawkeye fan, no matter what age you are, because I was up 62 to 10. And indeed, Tony Staus has come in as the quarterback. Started a couple of games this year, actually three. Kevin Lawrence gets the carry. Takes it to the 47. We take it to Matt Weiner. Matt. Hi, Pam. Maryland and North Carolina State. The Terps staging a comeback down 21-7 at one point. It's 21-14 when Scott McBride fakes out everybody, including whoever's operating the camera. There he is. He's in the end zone. Game tied at 21. Meanwhile, I predict a groan in Iowa City because Ohio State has just scored a touchdown. They are up 9-6 on Purdue. Thank you, Matt. No groan yet because he had not put it up on the scoreboard. Heron gets hammered at the line of scrimmage. It will be about third and two coming up. Big Ten standings. These are the, uh, the top five teams, the bowl-eligible teams so far on Iowa and Ohio State unbeaten. But that big loss to, to Iowa State coming back earlier in the season. And that is the thing that's uh, hurting them right yeah, now. Yeah, the other thing to remember now, the Rose Bowl is not obligated to take Iowa if both Iowa and Ohio State run the table. Boy, that would cause some havoc, wouldn't it? Big time. Lawrence does not get the first down. So if Ohio State does indeed get a BCS bid and goes to, let's say, the national championship game, the Rose Bowl could decide to take an at-large team yep. instead of Iowa, which I think is tragic. Yeah, it would be tragic. And, and because of the relationship between the Rose Bowl and the Big Ten for millions of years. When you think Rose Bowl, you still think Big Ten, Pac-10, and I really think that would be a huge mistake, but, you know, it's not mandated that they have to take a Big Ten team. Yeah, and, and it would be tragic. And, and we asked Kirk about that yesterday. He said, my, you know, my guys, we're just going to play. We don't care if we have to play a bowl in Hong Kong. We'll go to Hong Kong and we'll play. But I'm sure he would take the Rose Bowl over Hong Kong. I'm sure his athletic director would take the Rose Bowl over Hong Kong. And the check. Clinton Solomon kicks it into the end zone and then picks it up. That will be a touchback, so Solomon avoids a big trouble. Iowa has the ball at the 20. When we come back, we are going to check out the flag first, however, before we take you to break. Senior day here in Iowa City. A holding against Iowa. Decline it, take the ball. Or Northwestern will decline, excuse me. from the 20-yard line, first and 10. Pushes him back to the 10. We'll be right back to Iowa. Well, welcome back to Iowa City, where Matt Bonet has taken over at quarterback for the Hawkeyes, who continue to clear their bench. Kevin Sherlock with that carry. And before we go any further, we had, we had a kind of a trivia question as to Chris Carter the, had 27 touchdown yep. catches. Number one touchdown catcher in Ohio State University history, and you did finally get it, Chris. No, I didn't. I said it was not Terry Glenn or it was not <laughs> Joey Galloway, but oh. obviously, as everybody knows, is David Boston. David Boston had 34 touchdown catches between 1996 and 1990. I must have misheard you before. <laughs> you were going with Galloway and those other guys. But uh, that's the answer, because people were wondering. Schnorr with that carry, and here's Matt Weiner again. Matt. Well, Pam, still haven't heard the groan in Iowa City. I guess they haven't put up the score that resulted from this play. How about this call? Fourth and one from the 37, and Ohio State throws it. Michael Jenkins might have pushed off a little bit. He catches it, though, and the Buckeyes up 10-6 with time running out. Wow, that's a gutsy call, yeah, huh? Yeah, Michael Jenkins coming up with big plays all year. And Greg Prentz is stepping up in the pocket and delivering a deep ball. He's done that a number of times this year. Third and five. There was no groan, by the way, Matt. They put it up on him smattering the booze, and people are just too upset to respond. Schnorr got a yard short of the first down. Ohio 
State on the road at Illinois and then finishing up at home against Michigan. Some of the people here yelling go. But <laughs> yeah, they, they want to drive the stick. They want to finish. <laughs> David Bradley coming in to punt. This is only his second punt today. He had a 35-yarder a long time ago in the first quarter. We have not seen David Bradley since the first quarter. Well, the drive chart has just been uh, amazing, especially the, when the ones were in there. This is one punt, I think, all touchdowns. Bradley, the sophomore from San Diego. Oh, that's a beauty. Driving Patrick back to his 15. Flags are down as he's dropped right away by Scott Bolin. Flags now. Berlin earning his Hawkeye on his helmet there throughout his career as a special teams player. This year got a shot to be the nickelback and certainly come up big today from that position with two picks. Pushing the back on the receiving team. Half the distance. First down. Northwestern push back. Two at seven. That's where Randy Walker's team We'll take over. We'll be back. ESPN 2's presentation of college football brought to you by the exciting lineup of Suzuki products. All proud presenting sponsors of the Heisman Trophy. And by new Campbell's chunky roasted favorites. Hearty soups that fill you up right. The Northwestern flag flying over Kinnick Stadium. Northwestern giving up 62 points this afternoon, the most points they have given up since the 2000 Alamo Bowl when Nebraska beat them 66 to 17. Stouts retreating, and he's fortunate that was not picked off. The Iowa guy was the closest one, and we have time now after seeing Brad Banks to look at Chris's Heisman oh, candidates. And this guy's my new guy on the list. He <laughs> jumped up on a lot of people's lists, but you take a look at Chris Brown, the most probably the best running back in the country. Ken Dorsey, obviously undefeated as a quarterback, guy that snuck on the scene. Willis McGahey, really a top-notch running back from Miami, and of course Byron Leftwich, who could uh, not remember what he did last week with his offensive lineman carrying him down the field after going to the hospital to get X-rays. Lawrence picking up four, and we pick up Matt Weiner again. Matt. Now well, Pat Pittsburgh having all sorts of trouble with that pesky Temple squad today, tied up at 22. Mike McGann back to pass. They get to him, and there it goes. Quad Harriet scoops it up and scores it. The flag is on the offense. We'll get to this game on College Game Day now after your game is done. Wow, what a way to score for Pittsburgh. Stouse it's bounced up in the air off the hands of Jeff Backus. And speaking of College Game Day now, which Matt Weiner did, promoting himself. That's Matt. <laughs> College Game Day now presented by Acura is indeed coming up next on uh, ESPN2 with Matt and Mark May, Mark May the yeah. Pittsburgh Mark's guy. Mark's got to be getting nervous right Mark's now watching, watching that, that little bit. Yeah. Matt, by the way, went to Missouri, so he's been kind of quiet this yeah. year. He's got a good quarterback. Let's wait for basketball season. <laughs> Quinn Snyder, right? Yeah. Great year last year for them. Some people thought they didn't deserve to make the tournament, and then they did well in the tournament as Huffman cuts it away. Clinton Solomon, another good hang time for Huffman. Solomon runs by a couple of guys and Ooh. then is bent backwards. Yeah, he, he's, he took a shot. Ashton Aikens, one of those shots. Let's take it down to Rob Stone. Rob. Well, Pam, what happens when you bring the psychology department and the interior decorators of Greater <laughs> Iowa City, <laughs> Iowa, together? You get? Of course, a pink visitor's locker room. And it's been this way since the early 80s when legendary ex-coach Hayden Fry came up with the idea in an effort to give the opposition a calming effect. And <laughs> Ferentz has no plans to redecorate. Now, Chris, I know you're big into the mauves and the yeah. yellows and the pastels of the world. So what was your initial reaction when you and your Buckeyes rolled on into the pink locker room? Well, actually, we heard all about it. And we kind of made it a big deal not to let it get to us. But, and it didn't because when we played here, we only played here once in my four years. We won the football game, but I think Northwestern, they kind of fell under the spell of the of the pastel, which I don't even know what a pastel the is. The spell of the pastel. What is a pastel? But, you know, it's like kind of like soft Eastery colors, like pink and yellow. Like Easter egg mauve. colors? Yeah, kind okay. of nice right. and soft and <laughs> muted. Well, hey, muted. Yeah, I get Calm. you. I understand. Now I got it. Now I know what pastels are. You never know what you're going to learn on a broadcast. But other teams, though, Chris, have let it yeah. get to them. A couple yeah. other teams came in and actually put paper up on the walls mm -hmm. to try to get rid of that pastel-y look. I believe the 
legendary Bo Schembechler from Michigan. Yeah. That looked brought put, his team five yards, still second down. Sent the boys in and said, cover that up. It is over in West Lafayette. Ohio State survives. Wow. So let's update the standings for you. Ohio State goes to 11-0 overall, 6-0 in the Big Ten. Iowa needs Ohio State to lose. Yep. They have two more shots. They've got to finish out. Obviously, they got to win their next game. That's right. As Schnoor gets yet another cap, uh, carry. And again, Ohio State finishes out at Illinois. And then the home game against Michigan. Iowa, after today, takes on Minnesota next week on the road, and that's it. They were they not had an off week since the season started. It'll be a nice test for them at Minnesota. A rivalry game. Brett Bazinet, what a tough cookie he is, a redshirt freshman. Yeah. Playing on that leg and with the broken fibula, and they'll have him for three more years. What a treat that'll be to see him develop. Yep, you know, and, and if you're a Northwestern, what you gotta take part in is look at Iowa three years ago was last in the country in rushing defense. Now they're number one in the country in rushing defense. So Northwestern has to look, look, if Iowa can turn it around, we can turn it around and file this game away in their memory banks. That's what they need to do. And, and hopefully they'll get their shot next year. And say, remember last year, you looked up with 62 to 10? And that's exactly what the Iowa guys have done. They're yeah. just seniors and many of their juniors were on that one at 10 team in Ference's first season. And, and they go back that and they use that as a point of reference. You know, hey, we were at this point not too long ago. Let's keep going. Yeah. Fourth and seven, David Bradley in the punt again. Kunle Patrick back on his 10-yard line. Let the clock lead as much as they can. Finally snap it with three seconds left to go on the play clock. Patrick fielding it gamely at his 16, and he was stopped in his tracks by Abdul Hodge, who's had a great game off the bench for the redshirt freshman. Backup linebacker has a tip ball, caused an interception, also played well on special teams, a couple of tackles, well, a nice job. Adam unofficially can now Chris with five tackles, including that one, and he did caused the interception earlier in this second half. You know, another thing too, Pam, is what Kirk is building here. This is a, this state is in love with football. I mean, it's a, the wrestling capital of the world, and Steve Alford in basketball, but they thrive on football. And, and when you have recruits come in here and experience this type of win in this atmosphere, it's a powerful recruiting tool. Staus completing that pass to Ronnie Foster. Ronnie Foster. And that Iowa State game obviously is something that this team will not forget because they led 24 to 7 in the third quarter, did Iowa, and went on to lose it 36 to 31. And that is the only blemish on their record. And could keep them out of the BCS Bowl. Kevin Lawrence turning the corner. Picking up the first down and a whole lot more as he is eased out at the 41 by Adolphus Shelton. Brad Banks, you mentioned uh, a Heisman candidate, yeah. certainly. Literally a perfect day today, Chris. I mean, he, number one in total offense in the Big Ten, number one in quarterback in 50 in the Big Ten. And here's his numbers, five rushes, 54 yards, two DDs, two TDs, 10 for 10 passing, 197 yards, 251 total yards offense. It's outstanding, like you said, perfect performance. Kevin Lawrence on first down, picks up about four. Coming up at 3.30 Eastern time, this is the bottom of the hour on ESPN. Number seven, Virginia Tech takes on Syracuse at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. How will Georgia respond to a loss? They take on Ole Miss. 7.45 Eastern, college football Saturday, presented by the U.S. Postal Service. Take a look at Michigan and Minnesota at 7.45 Eastern. ESPN.com keyword schedule to get you up to date on what's what and where is where. Brandon Horn unable to come up with that catch. And Banks, talk about a trip to Pasadena. That is a possibility, but certainly not set in stone. Wow. Banks wow. today, Chris, with that 10 for 10, that is an Iowa school record. Obviously, even as Ohio State and Maryland yeah. guys, that's 100%. And Chuck Long previously had the record. He completed 87% of his passes against Indiana back in 84. So the best single game passing performance percentage wise in Iowa history for Banks today. Backus picks up a first down. Banks and Chandler, by the way, a combined 12 for 12 
for 100 percent. Yeah, again, just a, you're almost the perfect football game. And if you're a senior, that's certainly one that you want to go out on. Just the offense was outstanding. Special teams been great. Defense has been stout. Just uh, it, it gets your momentum for next week now. And, and they believe in themselves and they're a team that has talent and confidence. That's a dangerous combination. And they are for real. For any skeptics that might have been left out there, this Iowa football team is a very good, solid football team. 31 seconds left to go. Staus, not known as a nimble runner, takes it out of bounds at the 34 on the yeah. other side here. It was like he and Lawrence were saying, no, you take it. No, I don't want it. You take it. And obviously a miscommunication, but Staus didn't panic. Got the sidelines. And I'm, unlike Bazinet, Staus does know how to get out of bounds and take a slide. <laughs> and which, he is a guy who started the season, Chris, as their starting quarterback, yeah. was replaced by Bazinet, got back in when Bazinet got hurt. And you have to wonder about his future as a quarterback because now they're quarterback rich. Yeah, he's not going to be at Northwestern. I, there's, maybe, I don't know. But they, there's you know, certainly talk of transfers from Staus. Difficult to foresee it because Jenkins and Bazinet are both freshmen. Bacchus is uh, pushed out of bounds around the 33-yard line by Tony Burrier from right here in Iowa City, a senior getting some playing wow. time. And they're talking Heisman. Only one Iowa Hawkeye has ever won the Heisman. And that was the guy they named the stadium after. Niall yeah. Kinnick won it in 1939. Will Brad Baggs be number yeah, two? Brad, I think Brad's saying that, or I can't control it. And you know, Brad, you're right. You can't. So you keep playing like you are, young man. You're going to have a lot of say in it. And it's astounding again. First year starter here at Iowa. Doing it all as a senior. Kevin Lawrence goes out of bounds, and the fans are booing. They want the clock to go down. It's down to 11 seconds. They got a little little uh, tailgating to get to. <laughs> a lot of some people corn. started. There's some corn out there cooking. <laughs> Tony liked that one, our stat guy. He does a great job. <laughs> Tony Britt. Thomas, Thomas is Thomas here. Thomas Betis, our spotter, doing a great job here in Iowa and all season long. And Iowa about to go down to its worst blowout loss. Yeah. Camera guys do a great job. You saw how North Carolina State camera guys got mixed oh, up. Not our guys. Our guys never get mixed uh, up. They don't buy the fake. Stouts, Lawrence. He goes down. And the clock stops. Yeah, the clock stops. Because it's a first down, as the fans run onto the field, Lawrence is down, and there are still, there were two seconds left. We'll see if the officials should just let it go. Yeah, just call just it. Just let yeah. it go. I mean, yeah. look at all the, the people on the field. Let's see if they're going to play it by the rules or just let it go. Brad Banks, terrific game, young guy. He was perfect, threw for three touchdowns, scored two others. Iowa wins at 62 to 10. Coming up next, College Game Day now presented by Acura. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We'll see you from Iowa City. <laughs> Welcome back to our college football studios. College game day now presented by Acura with Mark May. I'm Matt Weiner and Iowa puts up 62 points on Northwestern. They scored in their very first possession of touchdown and they just kept on scoring and the Hawkeyes look better and better.